Hey, look at that. Those of you watching on YouTube can't see what I just did, but I definitely just, like, did some black magic to make that timing just absolutely perfect. Anyway, yeah, apparently the Nintendo Direct drought is finally over after, what was it? Like, uh, I don't even know when the last Direct was. You were waiting for that. You were definitely waiting for that. I don't even remember when the last one was. That wasn't like a, um, like a game-specific direct. So this should be interesting. Yeah, okay, yeah, the camera's right. I accidentally bumped the camera the other day, so I had to reset it before all this. Anyway, this is a mini direct that is 28 minutes long. And, uh, Nintendo, I don't see what the mini part is here, but I have a theory. My guess is there's no fluff here. And my guess is there's no major first party announcements. They probably couldn't record fluff, obviously, because coronavirus was a thing in Japan. And uh, it's still a thing in the US. Uh, wash your hands, please. Uh, think of the retail workers who unfortunately got labeled as essential, who don't want to be there and don't want to get sick and kill people, but are required, otherwise they get fired. Anyway, that's my rant on that. Uh, but yeah, probably no fluff. Probably no first-party games for the same reason. I suspect we are probably going to see a pretty dry 2020 out of Nintendo. Because whatever... It already looked like it was going to be fairly dry. And I have to imagine whatever their big winter releases may have gotten punted in the next year now because of delays in production. Anyway, let's direct. Uh, I should turn on direct. Boop. Yep, okay. Please note, due to COVID-19, release dates and other information presented in this video are subject to change. For potential updates, please check the official Nintendo website and social media channels, as well as those of other publishers. Hearts go out to all those impacted by COVID-19 during this challenging time. Thank you, Nintendo. I do have, yeah, I do have unmuted. There's just no music in the background. There's the music. Yeah, turn that down. Cool new theme for it, though. All right, what are we getting? Long ago, Xenoblade. Just as soon as I heard British accent, I'm like, it's Xenoblade. The Bionis and the Maconis. The Titans were locked in a timeless battle. Until at last, only their lifeless corpses remained. Wow, how crazy. I, I don't I don't know Xenoblade at all. I'm gonna I'm gonna be straight with you. I know um Gears and uh Saga more than I know Blade. No way. It's a Mechon. Commence the assault on Bionis. The Monado. It's the only sword that's a Monado Mechon armor. If we could just unlock the Monado's power. It's my turn! Shulk! No! It'll kill you! Shulk! And then it didn't strange. kill him. It was as if I could see into the future. This kid does not sound like um he doesn't smash at all, by the way. He sounds like he's like 30 and British. It's the power of the Monado. And so it begins, the resurrection of the Bionis. I've been waiting for you, Monado boy. The future I see, it isn't set. Malia. Father! So I can use this power to change the future. And that's exactly what I intend to do. Except in Smash, where you couldn't change the future. Recon. It's not over. I only know him from Smash, so I'm just going to keep making Bionis Smash references. You triumph. Okay, May 29th. Something to change, of course. Oh? New content? Okay, it looks beautiful. If the capital is on the shoulder, there are people there. I thought you'd want to go. Oh, that looks problematic.
the ultimate version of a modern classic, Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition. On Nintendo Switch, the game looks better and plays smoother Can't than believe they made a game for Xenoblade Smash OC. The battle HUD and menu screen. Now I know it's a game. Easy to use. I know it was a game before Smash. I've just never played it. Cause I think this was on Wii. And some of the music has been re-recorded. Now you can fully immerse in the majesty of Whee. this vast world. And a new epilogue, a new story, Future Connected will cap off the main game. So if you've played and loved the original game, you can not only revisit it, but look forward to one more adventure with Shulk. Good thing I came prepared. We'll probably be needing this. We and new 3DS, okay. Edition yeah, we I... And you can pre-purchase the game starting today. The Wii and PS3 generation, I did not get many games. And I never owned a new 3DS. I jumped right from a regular 3DS to uh, the Switch. Hi everyone. I considered getting a streaming new 3DS, but by the time I was like, you know, maybe I'll do that, they had announced the Switch. And I stopped caring. on a selection of them coming out this year. Now, let's roll through some headlines, shall we? Okay, so it's all this year game, so... Like I said, there's probably not gonna be much, um, much first-party content, I suspect. Which is probably where the mini comes in at. Oh! Oh. Stupid rare on the Wii. Well, that would also probably explain why I never played it. These were 2K? I didn't realize these games were 2K. Borderlands is a 2K game? Are you sure about this, Nintendo? I thought that was some other company. Like, I don't know, Gearbox or something they're called? I even think of a different company. Okay, XCOM was... Okay, actually, no, XCOM would be 2K because I believe all the, uh... All the Sid Meier games run through, uh, 2K. So that makes sense. That looked terrible, though. That, uh, squad shot was super aliased. Or super unaliased, I should say. Man, here I only... Thought 2K did um the sports games. Old enemies face off in a new trailer for the Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3: The Black Order Expansion Pass. Either this game did really good or it did really badly, and Disney wants to try and jolt it back to life. I think I have like four of these reactions now on YouTube where this game is featured, and I. Do not care every single time. Also, that is a interesting design for uh, Mr. Fantastic. Talk about a hot pursuit. We're not going down without a fight. We have a universe to save. He looks like he's played by Hugh Jackman, which is hilarious. Because Hugh Jackman is basically the Wolverine at this point. Doom always prevails. Doom must become a god himself. Doom! <laughs> In the darkest depths of the ocean lies a really fun game. Oh, how good! You are the last I'm glad the fun games race, lie at the bottom of the ocean. Global winter into an unexplored aquatic world. In this deep sea exploration game, you collect resources to upgrade your gear, craft items. Is this Subnautica? Deeper into the abyss. I think this is Subnautica. I know it's I not Subnautica, but it looks like what I think Subnautica looks better like. watch those oxygen and pressure levels. And if that's not challenging enough. Shinsekai's time attack mode, another dive, boasts a perilous maze for you to race through, culminating with a final monstrous threat. You know, it can get pretty heavy down there. 
so why not lighten the mood with the jukebox feature? It lets you remix the game's background music by modifying audio filters. The time has come to discover the truth hidden beneath the ocean's surface. When Shinsekai... The truth is apparently Japanese. ...Nintendo Switch today. Ooh! Live your best deserted island life... Okay, I think I heard this is just them talking about the 1.1 update that's already available. Enjoying island life in the Animal Crossing New Horizons game? I am actually, it's on my bed right now. I have the campsite as of today. Nobody shows up till tomorrow though, so I have yet another dead day of waiting. Okay, yeah, this is just 1-1. Is there anything special in 1-1, or are you just going to talk about Bunny Day? Can you hunt down the egg zipper head everywhere? Oh, okay. Plus, you can craft these special limited time items from the egg series. The Bunny oh. Day event only comes once a year. This time from April 1st to April 12th. Okay, that's kind so of cool. You craft and them. That's a neat There's way a of doing that instead of just turning April, them into him. It'll usher in some newly oh. added features, including the Earth Day event. Oh, Earth Day. We'll to bring you the I thought they were going to add uh, the, the flower shop. I saw apparently the data mining says too. the cafe is so, going to be coming eventually. Because apparently they have like data for you it or Brewster or something in there. Else about your life on the deserted island. It would be nice to have heard about that. Although knowing that Leaf is coming back is nice. Someone's hiring. Oh, this is your dad's company? Apparently, they offer a wide range of services. The job description entails many responsibilities. I'm Don't interested. Mop the floor and maintain a comfortable work environment. They're trusting you with crane operation and other Big mistake. tasks. Big mistake. Big mistake. Uh-oh. That projector won't do. Hmm. Think you can take care of that? Whether you conduct yourself in a professional manner or opt for more creative solutions, do what you need to do to get the job done. <laughs> okay. I'm I'm down for this. Hopefully you're ready to join the team and be put to work immediately. Because good job launches today. Okay, if that's cheap, I might pick that up. That seems like a good funny game. Catherine, oh. full body, the mature action adventure puzzler is coming to Nintendo Switch. Oh. Contemplating the next step in his relationship, commitment phobic Vincent finds himself. Pooh boy, we are we're gonna have a full trailer for this one, aren't we? Caught in a love quadrangle with Catherine, Catherine with a C, and Rin. Little does he know. And the one not named Catherine. His own demise. In this cult classic, your choices will affect how their relationships unfold, and it only gets weirder. Deservedly, not only is Vincent riddled with guilt during the day. I'm hoping the weirdness is about the puzzles, so not about uh, not about the Rin arc, because I know that got a lot of flack from people for being Atlas's usual, typical, um, you know, Atlas has one specific problem. When Catherine full body releases on Nintendo Switch. And apparently they made that problem worse and I hear they made that problem worse in P5R as well when it was already bad in the original P5. So that'll be interesting next week. Now for product placement. Well, they just sold a million copies of this game. If you want to set a high score, you got to get your body moving. Because too boy, you know the uh, Osu fans Speaking are going for this one now. 17 music tracks in the rhythm game. We're talking music from Super Mario Odyssey, Splatoon 2, and The Legend of Zelda: Breath of the Wild. Exactly one song from Breath of the Wild because there's only one song in Breath of the Wild. Let's be honest, the soundtrack in that game wasn't uh, wasn't great. That is not the voice I expected for that. I honestly expected it to be like deep genie voice. Oh, okay, it's an option. Okay, that's why. Feel free to change it up in the settings whenever you want. We're also adding in a new jogging option for both the custom and quick play modes. When you're not in a battling mood, 
you can simply run through a variety of fields. Oh boy! This free update for the Ring Fit Adventure game will be available today. Frankly, the only part of that that really mattered was the rhythm game. Better open the gates, one treasured TRPG approaches. Since 1990, the King's Bounty series has oh. been influencing the evolution of Western RPGs. I was trying to figure and out what it was. With a fresh look and a new it's approach. the other Fire Emblem. This straight up sequel will pit army against army, sending the player on a quest around the world to save the world. This time, the graphics are more realistic. Your choices matter more than ever. And so does the terrain you stand on. Boy, I can't so wait for the discourse about if like this game or Fire Emblem looks better. Across the land, you'll meet new people whose ethics and affinities are informed by the new character development system. Find out just how deep the gameplay will get when King's Bounty 2 launches on Nintendo I have to Switch admit, I, I do think I come down on the side of that looks better than Fire Emblem. Catherine is best girl. Super Smash I... Brothers Ultimate News approaches. Oh! The fighter included in Wave 6 of the paid Super Smash Brothers Ultimate DLC will be... Joining the battle from Of arms. course. This fighter is a I called it thanks to those extendable arms. So we'll have to extend our development time too. Oh, okay. Please stay tuned for just a bit longer. The next fighter will be announced and released this June. Oh, okay. That did take a while. I we figured Sakurai was talking about there was probably going to be delays. Arms game trial. And it makes sense, yeah. A free game trial of arms. By the way, it's totally going to be Ribbon Girl. Online members. Like we, we called this as soon as Arms came out. We were like, Nintendo is going to promote the hell out of this, and to do that, they are going to force it into Smash. So, for a limited time, you, can you know, we saw this coming. It's a disappointment, but at least they're getting. Unlike with Byleth at the end of the last pass, they are at least getting the disappointing one. Hopefully, out of the way now. So all the rest of them are exciting. Also, I literally did not listen to the ARMS news because nobody plays ARMS. Where... where am I? Now for Square Enix. Keep and play these I games. Survived. Also, wasn't this a, D a 3DS game? Is this getting a Switch port? Look, it's a Lollafell. Fire. Water. Wind. Earth. Nations Long ago, masters. the four nations lived together the in harmony. power exceeds the hand of man. And if unleashed, would bring down death, disaster, calamity, and blight upon the land. Heroes of light, may the crystals guide you. I like the one with the hat. It reminds me of, um... This is the crystal's blessing. Don't swear to details, eh? And don't stand on the Oh, who's the villain from, uh, 15? With the hat. Then I've done the right thing. I know it's it's not Ardbert. He's from 14. He's a hero from 14. Arden. He reminds me of Arden. Unfolds on the continent of excellent. Which is totally a spoiler, but who cares? Games. That game's like a billion years old at this point. The saga begins when our hero Seth, a young sailor. This game was released already, right? Because they're acting like it's new. Well, at least I'm alive. Here he meets Gloria of Musa. A princess who was forced to flee her kingdom when it was destroyed by evil forces bent on stealing its crystals. You dare claim the crystals? You do not know their worth. He also encounters two travelers determined to decipher a mysterious and magical book. Elvis and I didn't Adele. actually show it. I was hoping it would focus in on it. The call was from Code Red. <laughs> what a spooky place to be called from. Probably just a telemarketer. As if guided by fate, our heroes join forces and set off together on a grand mission. Bravely default to each. Oh, okay. Well, no wonder I'd be confused. You have second, and then you have two. Those who have gotten hold of special items known as asterisks. These stones allow their holders to take on jobs such as thief or black mage. Wow, it's a job crystal. More powerful in the process. This is just base Final Fantasy lore. Okay, let's do this. I shall steal it all. Every last treasure in the Empire. 
Do okay, that was some good voice you acting. Decide when to use brave points or be brave points. The of the game's turn-based system. The key to victory lies in knowing when. Yeah, to Final use Fantasy naming rules make sense. Commands. Choose brave to spend BP in order to allow characters to perform additional actions. I'm assuming Choose being in brave though has a drawback. To guard, reclaiming a BP in the process. Strategically hold back or take multiple actions in one turn. To make the right choice, you must consider your character's roles and statuses at all times. Should you manage to fell an asterisk holder, you will acquire their asterisk, allowing you to take on the associated job. Jobs the thief job. can be combined at will, greatly expanding your strategic options and influencing the development of your character. I do have to admit, I love the Final Fantasy games back where they had, like, um... You know, the job selection system. A demo version of the game will launch today. You know, back before it was like, uh, it is now where it's like, characters just have a set job. And they just do it. One BP per extra move, earn BP by defending. Okay, so there's a little bit of strategy to it. I'm assuming, like, moves combo up too, which gives more reason to use to build up BP. I'm kind of surprised Bravely okay, Default to become like a successful Square Enix franchise. Moving. Tabletop classics from around the world will come together. Oh, this is probably Nintendo actually Switch. that thing they announced like two years ago. That's right. I highly doubt it's Tabletop Simulator, which is what we all really want. No. Presenting every single game included in this massive new collection of fun from around the globe. Okay. Menkala, Hanafuda, Backgammon. Ah, Hanafuda, Nintendo's old staple. Present. Dominoes, Speed, Hare and Hounds, Blackjack, Four in a Row. It's Jack. just Connect Four, everybody. Mini Shogi, Ludo, Richie Mahjong, Sevens. Golf, darts, Texas. Why is golf in this pack? Wait a minute, back it up. War, carom, Chinese checkers, yacht dice, takoyaki. Not dice. <laughs> Spider solitaire, gomoku, matching, bowling. Why is bowling in this game? That's not a tabletop game. Mahjong solitaire, last card, fishing, Klondike solitaire. Toy Why is fishing in this game? Toy boxing, toy baseball, battle tanks, team tanks. Sliding puzzle and six ball puzzle. Phew, that really is 51 games. And there are many ways to play them. Some games are multiplayer, including options for up to four people, playing via local wireless, and in some cases, online play is. Okay, I was gonna say, I don't see anything specifying games, online. Match up with other players and just play. Play to your heart's content against rivals the world over. When Clubhouse Games 51 Worldwide Classics launches on Nintendo Switch June 5th. It seems cool. Purchase begins but today. I don't think it's going to have enough of a community to be worth buying. Will the real Master Ninja please stand up? Please stand up. Please stand up. Oh, Ooh. so you're the ultimate ninja, are you? Well then, prove it in battle. As one of eight players, you must earn the most points to claim victory. Mm. Sprint across stages. And show off your gum ninjutsu like only you. You can't can. call it a battle royale if it's eight players. I'm sorry, folks, but By to be battle royale, you, you gotta be like. I'm gonna say you gotta be at least fifty to call your game battle Disguise royale. Yourself. Anything less than that, and uh, yeah, you and gotta come up with a different name. Skills. Eight players, Speaking especially, is not a battle royale. From That's a smash game. To fast and flashy katanas, to tactical tricked-out yo-yos. Your choice of equipment could mean the difference between domination and defeat. You okay there? Ninjas thrive in YouTube? clans, so cement your supremacy in four-on-four -four team battles. I don't know if that's me or if that's like their recording went bad. Together. Will your efforts end in gummy disaster? Or prove? I'm gonna give it a moment here. Shout out to the rubber ducks, by the way, while we give this a moment. Battle Royale Mini? Nah, it do it shouldn't be allowed to have the. Okay, you know what? I'll say this. If it's 32 to 50, Battle Royale Mini. It's, if it's 50 plus, Battle Royale. If it's below 32, you gotta come up with a name that doesn't include the words Battle Royale. 
Like, eight players or less, that's a fighting game, in my opinion. Eight to 32... I mean, that's like, that's FPS territory. I don't think anything other than FPS is going that territory. When Ninjala sneaks up on Nintendo Switch, May 27th. And hey, it's free to play too. Oh boy, I'm sure there's microtransactions then. Check out what you can play oh, okay, on this is just their Switch. sizzle reel, which is interesting. Luke Skywalker's Jedi Academy to learn the ways of the Force. Customize your look, play a role in this Star Wars. We've still got a number of minutes. Does this mean there is going to be an announcement at the end? Star Wars Jedi Knight Jedi Academy launches on Nintendo Switch today. And get hey, ready to cool. strap in because Star Ooh. Wars Episode One Racer is coming soon. I remember that game. I got that game once upon a time. Classic. You'll pilot the blue dragon through incredible landscapes, battling giant creatures and lethal battleships. Ah oh, yes, Azure Dragoon reboot. Controls and lock on targeting. It's your destiny to reach the tower or die trying. When Panzer Dragoon Remake launches first on Nintendo. Okay, so they are now calling it Panzer Dragoon Remake, today. not just Panzer Dragoon. Okay. To specify, it's a remake, not a reboot. There's a lot more coming to Nintendo Switch. Now for Sizzle Reel Part 2. Trials of Mana on April 24th. Theoretically. Fuser, which is apparently, um... Guitar Hero, but as a DJ, I guess? The mobile Elder Scrolls game that no one likes. Warhammer 40k! Oh, that's the XCOM one. I think I remember people streaming that when it came out. I think more people played Vermintide, though, than that. A terrible looking FPS. Burnout, which also looks terrible. Saints Row 4 re-elected. I never finished Saints Row 4 because I hated it. It just wasn't fun. Just, it lacked the fun element of the prior games. This is some RPG and I probably should have checked what it was. Mr. Driller, cool. That's from the same team that does Poyo Poyo, right? Just looking at those graphics. Minecraft Dungeons is supposedly still on track for spring, even though we are now in spring. Well, it's been fun, but today's Nintendo Direct Mini isn't over yet. This okay, I was gonna say, we've got like three more minutes. There's time for maybe one or two announcements yet. Now for the latest information on the Pokemon Sword Expansion Pass and Pokemon Shield Expansion Pass. Oh hey, I forgot this existed. With an expansion pass, the world of the Pokemon Sword and Pokemon Shield games will grow. The okay. The island in the sea. The Isle of Armor. You're gonna give us and a the date? Snowscape known as the Crown Tundra will be accessible in the Galar region. You're gonna give us a it's date, or is this just a recap? With new people to meet along the way. Today we have some follow-up information about Part One. The Isle I was gonna of say Armor. you're gonna give us a date, right? On the Isle of Armor lies a dojo for Pokemon. A games, dojo, where trainers gather to master their skills. And if you train at this dojo, you will receive the legendary Pokemon. It looks a lot nicer. The DLC looks a lot nicer than the base game did, just looking at that one field setup. With Cub Fu, like, those trees looked actually detailed. The towers of two fists on the Isle of Armor. In this challenge, you will enter one of two towers. The Tower of Darkness, or the Tower oh, of Oh, so you do get to choose your you Urshifu. Choose and you and Cub Fu must face this challenge alone. Okay. One of the towers, Cub Fu will evolve cool. into Urshifu. If you choose the Tower of Darkness, a lot of people were like, "This is going to be version exclusive." But, if you choose the Tower of Waters, but I had a feeling they didn't choice. specify version exclusive on it, so I had a feeling it was an actual the choice. choice. Yours and yours alone. Beyond that, the evolved form of your partner Pokemon, be it Rillaboom, Cinderace, or Inteleon, will gain a Gigantamax form as a reward for your adventure on the Isle of Armor. Okay, so you do have to complete armor to use it. Pokemon's Gigantamax form moves. Beating a giant drum and controlling its roots, it's G-Max drum solo. Kicking a giant ball of fire to deliver a powerful... Doing the same thing it always does, just bigger! It's Cinderace! The opponent with water from 130 feet Being up, a literal sniper! Snipe. These moves are stronger than Dynamax moves, and when used, the opponent's abilities have no effect when they're attacking. Okay. 
I don't know if that would be useful at all. In addition to new outfit items and hairstyles, you can be the chairman, you can be Marnie. You also be new league card backgrounds effects. Oh boy, players. league card backgrounds. Okay, that coding with the um to use to show off the uh like Pokemon movie tape pass and Pokemon actually seems cool. Pass, part 1, the Isle of Armor. Will launch by the Still end just end. Look at the slowpoke go! Look at him go! You who purchased the expansion pass, we've prepared this early purchase bonus you can receive by August 31st. I wish that Leon's tights would use so your you number. That would be cool. In the wild area, you'll have a higher chance of encountering the Gigantamax forms of Caparaja and Duraludon in Pokemon Sword, and Garbodor and Charizard in Pokemon Shield. Battle with other trainers cool, those all... This the, the shield <laughs> options both suck. Cool. Actually, the only one I want there is the, um... That's all for today's Nintendo Direct Mini. The one? Thanks for watching. Oh, yeah, the Copperaja. That's the only one I want, really. Hope that's not just a weekend event again. Frankly, of the new games revealed here, the only one that I'm really like, I need that, might be that one where you just destroy an office building. Otherwise, it's like, Animal Crossing updates are great, Pokemon updates are great. I, I know a lot of people are excited for Xenoblade. I have just too much of a backlog of stuff to really jump into it, frankly. Like, by May, maybe, but, uh... I'll admit, with a P5 arc coming out next week, uh, Xenoblade is nowhere near the top of my mind. I was worried about one thing, though. No major first-party announcement, and I had a feeling when they called this Mini, despite being 28 minutes long, that there was probably no Breath of the Wild news, no Metroid Prime news. The real interesting one is Bayonetta 3. Three, which has basically vanished from the face of the earth. Like, I'm starting to wonder what the deal is with that game. Because it has basically just completely disappeared. The Nintendo offerings, you can... I mean, Metroid Prime, you can understand. They changed developers, which meant they had to throw out most of the game, apparently. Uh, Breath of the Wild. A lot of people were like, It's gonna be out this year! It's gotta be! They need something! No. They said it was now in development. You don't say now in development and have the game out next year. We were looking at probably 2022 at the earliest for Zelda. Where's my... Oh, there it is. I was seeing my mouse on on the uh, capture and I was like, Oh, my mouse is on the screen now. Yeah, nothing overly exciting, but lots of updates on no one projects. I'd call it pretty solid. Basically, like... I'm not gonna lie, if there if it wasn't for coronavirus, maybe we got a bigger proper direct here with something new tacked on the end. But I feel like like they even had to specify at the beginning here. Gave a big old long disclaimer. But yeah, release dates since are all subject to change. Release dates and other information is all subject to change. So yeah, like yeah, SMT5, apparently Atlas did the thing again where they announce a game as soon as they determine that they are going to make it. It's the same thing they did with Persona 5, where as soon as they determined we are making Persona 5, they announced we are making Persona 5, and then it just went dark for like five years. They apparently did the same thing with SMT5, where two or three years ago they announced, we're doing SMT, they said... We're going to do SMT5. And they immediately announced, we're going to do SMT5. And then they just went dark on the project. And apparently it didn't even enter full-scale active development until last year. Which is, frankly, stupid. And Atlas should stop doing that. Like, Nintendo stopped doing that too because they realized it's massively overhyping people and making them angry when it turns out the game that we announced that's coming out, that they thought was coming out next year was actually coming out in like three or four. Aha. Very nice. It's nice to use my voice while I still have it. Eventually I shall probably lose it. Uh, there's one other thing here. Let's see if I can find it. The ninja game. 
Bravely Default 2. Bravely Default 2 might be the other big thing in here, honestly. That game seemed interesting. If it's got meat to it, because it's got a lot of systems, but I want to see meat when it comes to um, Bravely Default 2. I want to see the story meat. It's a Switch game, so it should have a fairly meaty middle section. Like, limit, games with only, like, four party members always make me a little leery that it's going to be, a, like, a short 20-hour adventure when I want my RPGs 50-plus. Yeah, it sounds like KH3. Yeah, KH3 had a similar problem where, like, as soon as they got approval from Disney to do it, they were like, we're making Kingdom Hearts 3, and then they just went dark for, like, five years. That's why, like, Kingdom Hearts 3 and Persona 5 are somewhat jokes- for being delayed like 50 times. Yeah, the, the only other major thing here was uh, ARMS character is coming, which again, we knew that was going to happen because this decision was probably made a year or two ago when uh, ARMS was still hot and new and Nintendo thought, if we put this in Smash and we get it in front of people and we just market the hell out of it, it can become our next big franchise like Splatoon. Frankly, I think the arms fighter will probably be in Ultimate. And if, well, when, the question is just if Sakurai is involved, they do another smash in the future, probably that character is cut, guaranteed, because arms just will not be important anymore. Yeah, get stuff out that's coming soon with the bigger one coming in a bit... Yeah, they'll probably do a bigger direct again around E3 time, I'm thinking. Realistically, I think we should probably stop expecting a direct every other month. I think that's just... I think Nintendo realizes that, frankly, if you want to focus on things coming in the near future, you can't just keep cranking out directs like this. Like, they'll probably do, like, dedicated Sakurai streams for the Smash Fires. Like this. They'll probably do one in May... That's just Sakurai announced, like they did with Byleth, where it's just, here's the announcement, here's Sakurai's presentation, here's the date. They could do stuff with, like, Animal Crossing Directs and Pokemon Directs. They could do a dedicated, like, Zelda Direct, where they're like, here's the progress that we have on the new Zelda game. Like, yeah, I think realistically we should probably maybe expect, I'm gonna honestly go super low and say, I think maybe we expect three general Directs a year. At this point. One probably around this time in March. Maybe a little earlier in the year. Because this one probably got pushed. There was rumors of one back in the second week of March. This might have been it. It may have been kicked back because of coronavirus. Honestly. Probably one around May, June. Realistically that's probably still going to be their E3 Direct. It'll probably be timed up with E3. Because I, I feel like Nintendo just likes that time slot. Because they do then the Treehouse along with it. That'll be their big one always. And then they'll probably do one again in like September, October each year that's, you know, basically giving an update on end of year stuff and maybe some early part of the next year. But yeah, we've been going 44 minutes. Uh, I'm going to turn you all loose here. I got to eat. I gotta, I, work's weird. I have to eat supper in a half an hour, which is also my lunch. It's weird like that. One per season, yeah, four I could see. I'm going to go low and say three, though, because I don't... Realistically, you have, like, here's your spring one, which covers everything pre-E3 for this year. Here's your E3 one, which covers the big news. And then here's your fall one that covers just the end of year and the start of the next year. That's what I'm thinking. But, yeah, I, I'm going to turn you all loose here. So, uh, YouTube, thanks for coming out. You know, stream on Twitch. Twitch.tv slash Slowpoke is a gamer. All one word. Uh, Twitter at, at Slowpoke I a gamer because Twitter won't let me have the S because character limits. It's great. Uh, yeah, turn you all loose. Thanks for coming out. Like, comment, subscribe, talk to stuff. Blah.